Welcome to Sail Hub. This week I'm going to be learning about hull materials and more specifically steel. We've teamed up with the Wayward Life Sailing YouTube channel to tell us all about maintenance of a steel boat, working on a steel boat, who it's good for, rust and all that good stuff. kick off by introducing to you Taryn and Logan from the Wayward Life channel. These guys have got endless experience with steel boats. In fact, I think they started off in steel fabrication before they even had a boat. They've been on an absolute adventure, sailed for years on their steel boat, and now they've hauled out and they've started like a multiple year renovation project on their steel boat. So these guys are more than qualified to be telling you the nitty and gritty about steel. And let's see if it's aligned with Chris, our in-house boat builder from Sail Hub who's going to be giving you his thoughts and insight to steel as well. So let's get cracking. This is a piece of steel. Now all I can tell you is that it's pretty heavy and it definitely looks like it rusts. So uh, can you tell us a bit more information? Sure, yeah. So <laughs> this is probably a piece of AN32 or AN36 steel, otherwise known as mild steel or black steel. And Jenny's entirely right. It is heavy and it does rust. So basically, there's many different types of steel can be used in boat construction. And I'm, we're not going to talk about that. That's not what this video is about today. But what we will say is that any regarded boat builder will know exactly what pieces of steel to use where. So I wouldn't stress about that too much. So it's a really, really good material to build with. I mean, you wouldn't think so because, you know, everyone thinks ah, steel, it's going to rust. Don't put it in the water, especially salt water. Well, it's true. It does rust. But the thing that it is, is it's super cheap and you can make it super customizable because we don't need a mold. You can pretty much make whatever shape boat you want, which basically means the options are absolutely limitless. So when the hull's built with steel, it's generally built with plates. And what we do is we get plates and build them like this, one, then another, then another, then another. So it's an angular boat, let's say. It's what's known as a hard chine. So not the nice round, China you get on a normal like I say a fiberglass boat so the downsides of that are that it's not as hydrodynamic so you're not really looking at performance cruisers with this for because of that and the yeah. weight side of it but it does make building with plates very very easy so we're Taryn and Logan from Wayward Life Sailing and we're here at our steel boat which you can kind of see in the background She's up on stilts in a shed right now. Stilts. Boat stands. <laughs> <laughs> we chose a steel boat because we both have experience working with steel. Uh, we want to go places that we are possibly going to be touching the bottom. <laughs> or surrounded by ice maybe. Possibly, yeah. We just really wanted a, a good, strong, adventuring boat. Also we had a fiberglass boat before this and spent four months in the middle of summer working on fiberglass and decided we never ever ever wanted to do that again because of how itchy and hot and smelly it was and we again both knew that how to work with steel and knew that it was not nearly as itchy or as smelly and decided that it would be better to work on a steel boat than it would be to work on another fiberglass boat. And you never know unless you try. It's true. <laughs> So on the topic of building, who can weld this? Is it easy to weld or is it just like a professional? Can anyone learn to weld steel? Yeah, so I mean, easy. it's the easiest material to weld with, basically. So if you've never welded anything and you're thinking about a metallic boat, then steel's probably the way to go. It's super easy to use, it's super easy to weld. You can weld it with gas, you can weld it with TIG, you can weld it with MIG, and you could weld it with stick or MMA, let's say. It's really easy. So steel has presented a lot of unique challenges that have been very different from fiberglass. Um, we bought a boat thinking that we had a pretty solid boat with a couple of like small rust issues and those rust issues turned into very big projects and we have spent a year and a half so far in this boat shed refitting our steel boat. The challenge with steel is that if you don't have paint on it properly 
and painting a steel boat is a whole different process compared to any other material. If it's not properly painted, you get rust. And there were some areas on our boat that had um, air accessing them and they didn't have paint on them, so they ended up rusting. And just in case you don't understand what rust is or know a lot about how rust happens, there's three elements that you need to have rust. You need <laughs> steel, um, water, and oxygen. So obviously when you're living on the ocean, you have a lot of water and a lot of oxygen. And so when you have bare steel, you get rust. The biggest problem with our boat was it was designed with voids. <laughs> Little small spaces that you can't get into paint or whatever. Uh, and most of it was in the bulwarks where it had been boxed in and that's not a problem in itself. The steel will only rust as far as until the oxygen is all used up. And once the oxygen is used up, it stops rusting and it's totally fine until you introduce more oxygen. Yeah. But a word of warning that we were given from a friend in a boatyard who owns a steel boat, loves it beyond anything, but he said one word of warning is, corrosion is my new girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He did say that, and it's the truth. I mean, we have modern coatings these days, and putting modern coatings onto your steel from new is a really good way to go and that can seriously prolong the lifespan and resistance to corrosion of your boat so you can definitely build a steel boat that will last for absolutely years and when you do have a problem with it it's easy to fix but yeah you're not going to get around the fact you are going to have to work on it at some point that's steel steel's real <laughs>I don't think we would recommend buying a steel boat if you don't either have a lot of cash to throw at it <laughs> or skills and the desire to work with steel because you are always doing little fixes and there is a lot more maintenance to a steel boat even if it's well cared for than there is to a fiberglass boat. Like honestly, you could do an entire course on the maintenance that you need for a steel boat. There's books and books and books that you can buy and read. But if you're looking at a steel boat, just know that there is definitely a higher risk factor for potential issues that you don't see until it's too late. There's potential issues for needing to put a lot more work and money into maintaining it. Quite hard to keep on top of because of the condensation and you don't want condensation sitting inside your boat. Yeah, so as far as like maintenance goes on a steel boat, I think you need a lot more knowledge than you would to be working on a fiberglass boat. It's a lot harder to, yeah, properly maintain a steel boat. Um, but they're a lot harder to break <laughs> when they are well maintained. It's cheap, but it's easy to access. So traveling around the world, say sailing, you need to fix her up. Is it easy to pick more steel up? Absolutely. So any boatyard will be able to send you somewhere to get some steel without a doubt. But I think even more easy to access than fiberglass, for example, if you end up, I don't know, in some far out country in the middle of nowhere, they're probably going to have a piece of steel lying around on every construction site, which might not be the right steel, mm. but it may be enough to fix your boat to get you from A to B. Finding fiberglass and specific resins and the likes in strange places, maybe not so easy. So in general, this thing makes a fantastic boat for long distance cruises. I mean, even the weight of it. If we think about the weight of a boat, everyone would say, oh no, nice. it's a heavy boat. But when in a B, yeah. having that weight can help you punch through waves and give you a much more comfortable ride. If you're planning on doing some sailing in areas that aren't well charted or where there's like lots of debris in the water or ice potentially, steel can be definitely a better option than going with fiberglass. And generally if you just do not enjoy working on fiberglass, like I do not enjoy working on fiberglass. Me either, no. Um, maybe a steel boat's for you. I prefer to cut and weld than, you know, just be generally itchy. All the time. All the time. And hot. And only have four months out of the year in colder climates to work on it. Awesome advice from the guys at Wayward Life. 
these guys obviously know what they're talking about and make sure you check out their channel it goes right back to the start of the restoration project and even further back on the water you can get stuck into the nitty gritty on the hard restoration with those guys and they are great people so we'll put a link to their channel in the description below and hopefully that has given you a really good insight to steel if you're looking to buy a steel hull you're going to know what to expect and this video is part of a series so look out for the next hull material dropping soon and thanks for all the likes and subscribes please keep them coming because it's what keeps us thinking along and we'll see you next week